What's up Slick Review fans, we're coming at you with another video. Today we're going to launch a brand new series on the channel, reviewing Priority Pass lounges. If you are new to the channel, we do a lot of tech and lifestyle reviews and some advice as well, so make sure to hit that subscribe button, but let's get into it. So guys, I wanted to start a new series reviewing Priority Pass lounges. There's not a lot of them out there and I like to know kind of what I'm getting into, and especially going to an airport with multiple lounges, I think it would be good to know what you're getting into with each one. So on a recent trip, I traveled to LA and on the way back, I decided to try the Alaska Lounge. Now this one has a reputation for not allowing Priority Pass members into the lounge during certain times, and I think I see why. My wife and I were able to get in. It was late morning on a weekday. I think a lot of the trouble some people have is that it's not a very large lounge, and especially the ones that are airline specific that just happen to also work with Priority Pass, they need to keep space open for passengers on their airline. So anyone who booked a business or first class ticket gets lounge access. And for something like Alaska Airlines, if they know they have a lot of flights moving in and out that day, they need to reserve space for those people if they decide to come in. So that's why a lot of times these airline lounges, especially the Alaska Lounge, don't always let Priority Pass members in. We can't really be mad at them for that, that's just kind of how it is. Now like I said, my wife and I were able to get in, and our experience was okay. I would put it kind of mid-grade as far as US domestic lounges go. Now when you go abroad, some of the lounges are fantastic, even on Priority Pass. Now in the US, they're kind of hit and miss. Again, I would put this one kind of mid-range. They had a limited selection of snacks. We had a basic selection of fruit, couple salads, a soup, a soda machine, as well as a coffee machine, and kind of this cool pancake maker that would spit out a couple pancakes at a time. I tried those, they were again, okay, if you were going through this lounge early in the morning, it would suffice. They did have a bar as well. It had kind of basic bottom shelf liquor, which was complimentary, as well as the more well-known brands available for purchase. Now they also had a selection of wines and some beers as well. They do say that each guest is limited to three drinks. I didn't see any way that they were enforcing that, and I think that's just a way for them to cut off someone if they're going a bit overboard. They did have a menu as well for some hot items that they could prepare. The prices range from about eight to $10, which isn't bad if you're looking at what else you can get in the airport for that, and if you're expecting to pay for a meal in a lounge, a lot of them will just include hot meals for free. But again, eight bucks is really not all that bad. Now I did a quick video walking through the lounge. These days you kind of have to be a little discreet when you're videotaping in an airport. A lot of people get a little skittish about that, but I was able to quick walk through and just kind of show you quick how it's laid out. Now the sitting room is quite small, like I said. They do shove a lot of chairs in there. There is a limited selection of outlets along the wall. The food area wasn't the cleanest, and especially the area by the soda machine. I don't know if there had been a spill recently, but it was quite sticky over by that machine. There's a children's area, which unfortunately does not have a door, and two telephone rooms that do have doors. Now there were people sitting around me that should have made use of those that did not, but those are available. The restrooms were very clean, and then way off to the side there was a couple copy machines as well. Now we were able to get into this lounge, not only the two of us, but also outside of the published three hour prior to departure guidelines. Now according to a lot of reviews available on Google and things like that, experiences can be varied. I did not think based on what I'd read before that we were even going to get in, but we were allowed in, both me and my wife, with no issues. So again, I think maybe a smile and a nice hello goes a long way when checking in. And again, it kind of depends on the day if they think they're going to have a lot of their own passengers coming through. 
So in the end, guys, I mean, with Priority Pass, it comes with a lot of credit cards, so you're not really paying to get in. It's kind of tough to complain or find anything to knock it for. But again, as far as lounges go, I would put it kind of mid-grade. If you're passing through LAX, it's probably worth checking out. I have heard that some of the other lounges are a lot nicer, such as the KAL Lounge and the International Terminal. However, that was quite far away, and LAX does not have any sort of tram system, so you do have to walk between the different terminals. And flying out of Terminal 5, we didn't want to go that far away from our gate. So we decided to try the Alaska Lounge and we're able to get in. So that's it for this video, guys. Like I said, as I travel, I will be adding to this series just to check out the different Priority Pass lounges that are out there. So thanks for stopping by. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.